Hello people, it's Thursday. It's 4 p.m. here, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern. And that means it is time for Thursday Q&A Live from the studios of Digital DJ Tips, the leading online DJ school. Now that means that we are on our Facebook page, which is where we would prefer you to be. I'll tell you why in a minute. We're also on YouTube and we're on Twitch as well. With an hour to answer your DJing questions, queries, challenges, to let you sound off, to let you say what's gone well and what's gone badly for you in your DJ this week. Basically, it's a place for us DJs to hang out. And if you're learning to DJ and you want help with this amazing hobby of ours, then you're in the right place. We are the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the number one selling book on Amazon on how to DJ. Uh, and I'll tell you how you can get a free copy of this book as well uh, in a second, uh, just for being here. Uh, so can't say much fairer than that, other than, Please ask questions, that's what this is all about. All the questions you ask on all the platforms come straight through to me here, and we will pick our favorites. Don't ask more than once. This is a, a wonderful thing which has been made by one of our, uh, one of our loyal viewers um, who uh, outlines what I always say, which is keep calm. This is a place where we're all friends. Uh, and only ask your question once. If you ask more than once and I see that, I won't answer your question, whether you ask it then a hundred more times because it just clogs up the channels for everyone else. So a bit of etiquette and we will do our hardest. Now we're here in the studio today. We've got all the equipment you see here back in the, uh, in the back behind the cameras. We've got uh, pretty much all the DJ gear you could imagine. So we can always pull stuff up to show you. And uh, what we've got showing here, uh, for our intro sequence today is in fact um, the very first DJ gear or the very first DJ gear that I'm proud of that I bought, uh, which is my uh, Technics turntable, one of them anyway, and the Technics mixer as well. We've got these out because we've been doing some training on mixers and turntables and DVS and all that kind of thing. Uh, and so these were out. I thought I'd leave them on the desk and uh, feature them here. This is very, very old gear like you know, you've got analog, only analog on the back here. Uh, this is proper old school DJ equipment. And it's not to say you can't use it in the modern world. And that's actually what we've been training today here in the studio. We've been training the six ways that you can use vinyl as a DJ today. And only one of them involves real records. The rest of them are all digital. So that's something that you can look forward to forthcoming from us here at Digital DJ Tips. Uh, so to get that free copy of the books, really simple, uh, you just go there, digitaldjtips.com slash join. When you do, we will join you up to Digital DJ Tips. It's free. You get a free copy of the book. You get a free copy of the gear guide, which is our annual publication that helps you choose DJ gear and avoid big mistakes. And also you will get our weekly Tuesday tips emails, which is the whole point of joining up really, because that's where we help you become a better DJ. We'll send you all that's been going on, news, features, reviews, mixes from our DJs, uh, free lessons from our courses, all kinds of useful stuff every week in that newsletter. So do join us one more time before we begin then, digitaldjtips.com slash join. It's free, we'd love to have you as one of our 150,000 members. Right. Now, for those of you that know how this works, this is the point where we head over to the comment cam, where I am better equipped to take your comments live. So uh, I will press that button there. Uh, head over here. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, this is the point where I don't manage to get your comments on the screen because, uh, because I haven't quite cracked how it works yet. And indeed, we don't have your comments on the screen yet. Let me just see if that button there will do it. Hey, Mixmaster G, how are you, my friend? Uh, and uh, so we're off. Hello to Positive T over there on Twitter. Uh, sorry, Twitter, on Twitch rather. Uh, hello, Positive T. Uh, and everyone else, all of our regulars piling in. Gems, DJ Pac-Man, uh, DJ Easy Mixmaster, uh, having a very sunny day. Yeah, there's a heat wave across Europe, isn't there? So a very sunny day there in France, says DJ, uh, Mix, DJ Easy Mixmaster. Uh, hello to Paul in Milton Keynes. It's sunshine everywhere. It's what we like to see. Um, and the ruckus, my good friend. Hello to you there too. Um, and I love the way everyone tells us what the weather's like where they are. It's, it's good stuff. Right, listen people, we're here to answer your questions. That's what this is all about. So wherever you are in the world, and we've got people joining us from all over the place, as you can see, uh, don't be shy. 
ask away, we are here to help. So here's a great question to start with from Jason. Is it worth trademarking or service marking my DJ name? So look, if you are setting up with, uh, you know, um, a venture capitalist, angel funding, setting up a business with you as the DJ at the head of it, uh, and you've got, uh, you've got uh, plans to, you know, to hit the stock markets and all the business corporate stuff, uh, but it just happens to be in the DJ world, well, yeah, definitely get your lawyers in, get everything trademarked, get everything service marked. If you're a DJ and you've got a DJ name you like, the easiest way to claim that DJ name is just to buy the .com and to get that name on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and so on. You know, that is most of the battle. Um, the only time that will cause you to come unstuck is if someone else has already got the same name and they're clued up enough to challenge you over it. So as long as you pick something someone else hasn't got, and then you can grab the social media and the internet handles for it, and the .com is the one to go for, by the way, then you'll be, you'll be fine. Uh, so my advice to you is unless you are, you know, as I said, going, going at this from a business point of view with, with, with funding behind you and shareholders to look after and stuff, I wouldn't bother with any of that stuff. Just get yourself the .com. Uh, and even if you can't get the .com, you know, there's other ways around it as well. I see companies that put the letters, you know, if you can't buy the name of your company, you might put we are in front of it or HQ at the end of it. Um, or put dashes between the words, you know, whatever you need to do um, to get something that's close. Um, so that's some old gear, says Jimmy. It certainly is some old gear if you've joined us late. Uh, I've got one of our old, it's even got the old Digital DJ Tips logo on it, hasn't it? One of our old uh, 1210s uh, there and our old Technics mixer as well, which have been out today because we've been talking about, uh, we've been talking about, uh, um, this stuff in some training that we've been making. So uh, that's why that is out. Uh, okay, so um, hello to um, Sarah, who says it's 23 degrees in Barnsley in Yorkshire today. Uh, so why do you think, here's a good question from Jimmy, why do you think vinyl has been having a bit of a comeback? Um, so we need to put into context what this comeback really means. Let's, jo let's jump over here and we can look at some vinyl while we're talking about it. We need to put into context what, context what this co comeback, in inverted commas, really means. Here's some of my old vinyl that I just pulled out at Randall. This is an interesting one. Knights of the Turntable. These were bootleg 12 inches from back in the day. Uh, because remember that back in the day when vinyl was the only way we could get our music, there's quite often the case that you couldn't find the records that you wanted. They just weren't ever made available publicly. Um, so people put bootlegs out. They pressed up illegal versions of them. This had um, stuff from um, uh, various artists that just was hard to get at the time. And people were just pressing up illegal copies of that. And there's an old Huge Tunes 12-inch uh, from back in the day there as well. Um, you know, records were the currency of DJs once upon a time. And they're not anymore. I mean, they really aren't. Records were the only way, really, to play DJ music until CDs came along and then Pioneers, CDJs and so on. And then turntables kind of had their day uh, and became coat stands in the corner of DJ booths. But of course, one thing that we've learned as technology moves on is that old technologies rarely die. They just find their niche. And so turntables and record decks have found their niche. So in the DJ world, of course, there is still a healthy interest in turntablism, which is scratching and performing with turntables, and also adapting turntables so you can use them with digital music. So DVS systems, where you put control vinyl onto your decks. This is control vinyl, this is Serato control vinyl, uh, which will control the music from your decks on your software. Or phase, which is another way of doing it. So wireless system, I won't get it all out, but this is a wireless system uh, that will let you uh, that you put a little puck on your turntable, a little, um, a little, looks like a domino on there, and then wirelessly communicate with your DJ software in order to do the same thing, to let your turntables control your DJ software. Uh, but also, of course, there's an awful lot of DJ gear out there now, which has got spinning platters with vinyl on top, 
So the RAIN 12s, the RAIN 1 is a controller that does that, as is a Pioneer DJ Rev 7. And you've even got media players that don't need a computer, such as the uh, SC6000 from Den and DJ, which is, again, motorized with vinyl and stuff. So there's loads of ways of using the vinyl feel nowadays as a digital DJ. But when it comes to the actual records, when it comes to DJing with records, it is still there, and there are still releases that only come out on records, but there are still releases that only come out on cassette. It's a tiny, tiny, tiny portion of how DJing is done today. And it's cool. There's also retro scenes, of course, where people, you know, have vinyl only nights where they're only playing the music from when vinyl was the only thing we had. And there's a place for all of this stuff. But the reason vinyl is making a bit of a comeback is that there's a big nostalgia thing going on. People just miss having those sleeve notes, having those pictures, being able to browse, being able to look at something and hold something and pull it out. And vinyl satisfies that craving. I um, have got my mother-in-law staying with us at the moment, and she was telling me how she started buying vinyl again. Now she used to collect records. She had a great record collection back in the day. She was talking to me about her Steve Silk Hurley 12 inches and early electro she used to collect in the 80s. But she was saying to me that uh, she started buying vinyl recently again. And I was like, well, have you got a record player to play it on? And she's like, no, I just, I just want it again. I just want, I want the, the music of my, of my youth. Jazzy Jeff says a really good thing. He says, um, and I know this because we've just been editing some outtakes from our Jazzy Jeff course, and I've just spent days going through, like literally, literally going through days worth of outtakes to find the kind of gems um, where Jeff was sharing stuff that we haven't, we haven't put public yet. One of the things he shared was he said, when people say that music was better when they were young, what they're really doing is reliving their youth. They're keeping their youth, capturing it again, remembering it again. And of course, those were the days when we were carefree. And so, of course, the music from those days is going to be special to us. So I think there's an awful lot of nostalgia. It's no surprise when you look at the charts of what vinyl is selling now, they're very different to the charts of what vinyl was selling 20 or 30 years ago. In fact, probably they're very similar because it's the same vinyl. It's all the big bands, it's all the uh, super groups, it's all the, 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 the hugest acts in pop music of all time who tend to sell vinyl nowadays. Not least because they're the only ones who can book the pressing plants. There's a lot of talk nowadays that if you're not Adele, you can't book space in the pressing plants because, of course, when a big new release comes from Adele and Beyonce's announced a new album today, you can guarantee that the pressing plants are going to go with the big money from those major labels. And anyone who wants to print a hundred run of a, a dance 12 inches is, is going to go to the back of the queue. So, yes, there is a resurgence. But look, vinyl went like that and it's bubbling along at the bottom quite happily now. Um, you know, the Kindle didn't kill the book. Um, we sell an awful lot of this on Kindle, but we also sell an awful lot of hard copies of this through bookshops. And I know because I get the royalty statements every six months. Uh, the Kindle didn't kill the book. Sometimes people want to own the book and certainly bigger books with photos in and stuff, coffee table books. So it's the same with, with, with um, music. Yes, digital has taken over, but it's not ever going to be 100%. Great topic. Thank you for that question. Let us dive back now then to the, uh, the desk. Uh, and we'll carry on with, uh, with, um, with what we've got coming in here live. So what have we got next? Uh, this is from Pavel who just says hello, hello Pavel. Um, so my first mixer was so old it had no crossfader. What was that says the Ruckus? I bet it was a, um, I bet it was a mixer from Realistic. Do you, me, do you want me to show you my first ever mixer? I'm just gonna pull up a browser uh, and jump to a, um, jump to a, Google Images page, uh, and I'm going to search for my first ever mixer, uh, which you uh, it might even be the one you're talking about. Um, and this got stolen from me, talking about electro, this got stolen from me by someone who was an electro DJ and he wanted it to do some stuff. I'll never forgive him for that. Well, I will actually. I can't even remember his name, so I'm obviously not that angry with him. Uh, so here we go. This was the first mixer I ever owned, and this could be the one that you are talking about. It is, it is not on the screen at the moment. So that's interesting. Uh, it looks like I can't share the um, computer with you today, which is a shame because I just went to all the trouble of getting that up on the screen. 
Uh, I'm sure I checked that. Oh, I know why we can't do that. Oh, that's easy to fix. And I didn't check it before we go live. Naughty me. We have this rule that says check everything before you go live. And I thought I'd gone through the checklist, but that thing wasn't on the checklist. So uh, hopefully in a second that's going to kick in and I'll be able to show you. Should we try again? No, it's not live yet. It will be in a minute, hopefully. Okay, you can tell we are live here, can't you folks? Uh, all right then, listen, questions. We're here to answer all your DJ questions. We're live in the studios of Digital DJ Tips, as you can tell, because I am unable to control the mothership as perfectly as I'd like to. Uh, and that means that we're here for anything that you would like to ask us. We're on, tw we're on Twitch, we're on YouTube, but please, Facebook is the best place. By the way, I didn't tell you why Facebook was the best place. The reason is that the questions you ask there stay underneath the video, even when we're finished, when it's a recording, and then my team can get to you. But on the other platforms, they don't. So if we don't answer your question, we can get to you later if you do it on Facebook. Right, let's jump back to here. I'll give it one more time and see if the uh, system has kicked in and managed to get that to work. Yay, it has, look at that. So that's the first mixer that I ever owned. Uh, a little realistic four channel, it was called a microphone mixer, but you could mix anything with it. And as you can see, it had a mono or stereo mode. When it was in stereo mode, by using this little switch here, you could mix two sources, like two turntables, but you had to push both faders up at the same time. And when it was in mono mode, you could have four mono sources. I absolutely loved that mixer. It was powered off a nine volt battery, believe it or not. Uh, so good times, good times indeed. Uh, right, um, so the ruckus, maybe that answered your question. Uh, let's uh, grab another question. So this is from Joanne, beginner question here, and please, we love beginner questions. I've not used my crossfader before, and I've recently switched it on. When I move the fader towards the deck, it starts the deck playing. Is there a way to stop this? Yes, there definitely is. You don't tell me what equipment you're using, but in your software, there will be a fader or crossfader auto start feature, and just go to the settings and find that feature, Joanne, and turn it off, and that will fix it for you, simple. Um, so, B Hornet the third, record box or Serato, which one has better, faster workflow? Uh, they're both really good. The only thing that record box has over Serato is that it will work with what we call standalone gear, as well as with software. So in other words, if you're using Pioneer DJ standalone gear, which doesn't need a laptop, and you plug a USB drive into it, then record box will work fine with that, but also it'll work with your laptop and a controller. Uh, Serato won't. So if you want to do both those things, maybe you want to DJ in a club with a USB drive and you want to DJ with a laptop and a controller, you might be better off with Recordbox because it's the same software that does both, which uh, is the only software actually that does both. Uh, right, so this is from Ralphs in Latvia. And Ralph says, how to sort out songs I've already played in a recorded mix at home so they don't repeat on another set. I'm using Traktor. Uh, right, so I'm not sure what you're asking here, but I think what you might be saying is how can I tag or mark songs that I've recorded, I've used in a set, uh, so I don't accidentally use them again? It's a good question. Um, and off the top of my head, has Traktor got smart playlists now? I'm not sure if it has. Can't remember if they've added them. Off the top of my head, I would, in a, in a column I'm not using, so maybe the composer column or the, um, the album column, if you don't use the album column in your DJ software to, to tag your, your tracks, I don't, um, you know, put used in mix, uh, and that's what I've done in the past, like used in mix or something, um, and then you can sort by that, uh, even if you haven't got smart playlist, you can, you can click that column, so everything you've used in a mix will suddenly all be together, and then you can select from the stuff that's left as you're planning the next mix, so you don't accidentally um, you don't accidentally use them again. You could even drag everything that's left into a temporary playlist that's called not used yet or something. Uh, that's one way of doing it anyway. Um, this is from Tony, who says, I'm using the Rain One, which is a great motorized platter. We were talking about motorized vinyl type equipment earlier, weren't we? I'm using the Rain One with Quantize on in Serato, but when I use the manual loop in and out buttons, it doesn't quantize. Uh, the quantize setting is set to one beat, but it seems to ignore this. And that's because it's meant to do that, because manual looping is about you choosing where you want to loop. If you want a quantize loop, use auto loop uh, and set it to the length that you want the loop to be. Um, so that's, that's the way it should work there. Um, this is from uh, Mixmaster G. So Mixmaster G, tell me what's wrong in engine. 
Uh, I'd like to, I'd like to know that. Um, apparently, uh, it's been eating playlists, but Engine 2.1 that's come out now hasn't fixed it. So uh, tell me. Mixmaster G, by the way, is the man behind DJCU, the DJ conversion utility. Uh, and if you want to convert uh, tracks uh, from one DJ software to another, uh, his software is one of the ways you can do it. And I'll show you how to find that software. Um, just go to DJCU on on Tinternet and click on the top thing that comes up uh, and this is the software. It's a snip at $20 or 20 euros uh, and only for Mac though. Uh, so if you want to convert between different DJ systems and you're a Mac user, um, look no further. This is a great simple way of doing it. Always like to give Mixmaster G a shout out because he's extremely, uh, extremely generous with his time uh, over on our live shows. So repaying the, uh, repaying the, uh, the favor there. Uh, right, so uh, talking about nostalgia, merge beats on Twitch, we're all doing it. We could all buy a two-door hot, hot hatchback from Kia, but we want the XR2 from our youth. Same thing, oh, the XR2, indeed. Um, so um, um, you usually only get albums on vinyl nowadays. Yes, you do. I mean, there are 12 inches pressed on vinyl as well, but, uh, but yes, you're right. Um, there's a resurgence, a resurgence in 45s too as well. Yes, I mean, there, are, there is a resurgence going on in all kinds of vinyl. It's, uh, it's, but it's, a, it's bubbling, as I said, it's bubbling, bubbling along the bottom. It's not the kind of thing that is, uh, that's mainstream. Um, so um, we've got questions coming in from all of our platforms, so do keep them coming in. Uh, do you have a new computer optimization guide? for when getting a new laptop. So we do have, a, there's two places we have an optimization guide and I'm pulling the laptop into me now so I can uh, show you where those are. So the first one is, and let me just dial it up, um, is a very simple uh, guide, uh, optimize laptop. By the way, in fact, let's do this live together because I always try and teach you guys this um, when, we, uh, when we're live and I'll do it now just the once. So if you head to the Digital DJ Tips website, which of course you will know is at digitaldjtips.com, uh, in the top corner, click the magnifying glass and then type optimization or whatever it is you want to, to find out about. Click search, we've got about 6,000 articles here. So something here will come up that will help you. And as you can see, how to optimize your Mac or Windows laptop for DJing, uh, a recent edition of that has just gone live here and it's helped over 10,000 people. So look, here is how to do it. Go and search on the Digital DJ Tips website. Uh, we've got specs for all the software platforms here and lots and lots of advice on how to do it. Plus you can ask questions underneath, which lots of people have done. So uh, Digital DJ Tips website is your friend for that. Um, right, the reason I keep looking down there, by the way, is I haven't found a better way of turning the comments on again when we change cameras. It's boring, but I'm letting you know why. I will do it at some point. Um, so, um, next uh, is from Helio, who says, what speakers do you recommend for small venues? Well, I'm not a PA installation engineer at all. The speakers I recommend are the ones they've already got. But if you're a mobile DJ and you want speakers to play at parties, um, again, I'm, it's not my, it's not my uh, realm to recommend that because it all depends upon the money you've got and the size of parties. All I would say is a very, um, assuming that uh, you, you've got, you get reasonably modern speakers that are reasonably sensitive, so assuming a level playing field as to the quality of the speakers, uh, assume about five watts of power per person. So if you want to play to 10 people, you need a 50 watt system. If you want to play to 100 people, you need a 500 watt system. Try and get at least one subwoofer, which is the base speaker that goes on the floor. One speaker on the floor and two side speakers is a good start. And again, five watts per person. So think about the biggest um, number of people you want to play to, multiply it by five, and there you have a starting point. But it is just a starting point. Um, I would uh, advise you to ask on the Global DJ Network if you want to uh, get proper advice on that because people will ask you questions there. Uh, and when they do that, uh, they'll be able to give you better advice. So let me show you about Global DJ Network, actually. Uh, it is a, one of our little secrets. Um, and I'm just gonna get it unlocked and uh, logged in here because my, uh, my um, I can't talk and type a password at the same time, obviously. Uh, my computer isn't logged into uh, Facebook at the moment, so I'll get it logged in and then I'll show you. Uh, and you can join this yourself, all welcome. 
Uh, Global DJ Network is our group which will show you how to become a better DJ for free. It's on Facebook and you have to apply to join to it. And as you can see by looking at it now, look, there's our live show that's currently live. As you can see by looking at it now, it's got all kinds of DJing questions, queries uh, and stuff going on. It's one of the best places to ask your questions and to learn about how DJing is done today. And it will be the place to ask your PA question. Uh, we love Global DJ Network. It's about 12,000 DJs in it now, I think. Um, so all you gotta do is go to Facebook, find the Global DJ Network and click the invite, uh, the join button, it'll be at the top here, and we'll let you in. It's free, but we do let everyone in individually. So you're gonna have to give us a second to, or a few hours to find your application and to get you into it. But if you're not in Global DJ Network, it is the Facebook group that you wanna be a member of, trust me, it's a winner. Right, okay, back to the questions. Um, so uh, DJ Texas had exactly the same mixer. Um, but the, oh no, you had the, the next one up. Yes, that's the one I always wanted, but I couldn't afford. Uh, that had a VU battery meter and the Q master toggle switches. Indeed. Um, so, um, any tips for using the XP2? I bought one to go along with my SB3, but I barely use it. So the XP2 is, where's our XP2? It's normally around here somewhere. There it is, right under my eyes. Uh, is this. It's a special box. Uh, from Pioneer DJ, works with Rekordbox and with Serato, uh, and it's designed to give you breakout control of your samples, uh, samples especially because you can get 16 going at a time, but also other modes on your pad, so your, your, your drum rolls for instance, your loop rolls uh, will save you having to use a parameter button to move backwards and forwards through them, and it's got other stuff on it as well to help you control your DJ software. You know, something like this is useful, but it's overkill for most people. Really, this kind of box I think is useful, funnily enough, if you've got a system like this. If you've got old-fashioned turntables and record decks, um, and then you want to put DVS on them, you want to get some control vinyl on here, or more interestingly, actually, for a system like this, would be using phase. Uh, and the reason that phase would be more useful is that it will work with any old mixer, including this one. So let's, while we're at it, let's look at phase. So phase is a little box that looks like this. And the idea with phase is that you put a piece of vinyl, any old vinyl, because you're not going to play the vinyl, onto your record deck. And then you put one of these pucks over the top like that. This is battery powered. It's a transmitter. This receiver, you plug into your laptop on the back, pop it down there, and you plug the outputs into your mixer. And then that will control from here, this, as you're scratching, talks to this, which then sends the information from here to the computer and tells the computer what to do. And then your music comes back in this way and into your mixer. So you can use any old mixer, any old turntables, uh, and use phase to turn them into digital, uh, which is really cool. Uh, it is a great way of turning old gear into the kind of gear that you can then DJ with. Uh, but the question is, how can I use my XP2? Well, in a setup like this, yes, you're controlling your software, but how are you gonna load your tracks? How are you going to turn on and off all the stuff that a DJ controller, even a cheap DJ controller has? You know, a, a basic DJ controller like this, it's got all these buttons and stuff and loading stuff and effects. And how do you get all those to work when you're working with old fashioned DJ gear that looks like this? And the way you get all those to work is by plugging in a box like this. And normally this would be perched literally probably just at the back of your turntable. Uh, sorry, the back of your mixer, and it'll give you like the controller features that are missing on a mixer like this, which is a, an analog mixer. And if you were to look at a modern DJ mixer, I've got Atrax Serato mixer here, then this has got all the buttons on it. You see all the buttons here? It's a bit hard to see silver mixing the light, but it's got all the buttons and stuff on it that are repeated on this. But of course, a mixer like this one here hasn't. So, you know, your SB3 might be a basic DJ controller, but it's got pretty much all you want for basic DJing on it, including control of your loops and your effects and so on. So it might just be that you don't need the extra stuff on the SP2. It might just be that it's, um, it's something that, that's superfluous for you, in which case, get rid of it. Um, but 
if not, I'd say play with samples. Play with getting lots of samples you like loaded up and using the pads to trigger them when you've got quantize turned on. And then you can start doing some, some really interesting stuff by dropping stuff in and looping stuff and starting to make tracks yourself, make live remixes of tracks and so on. Um, but this is the kind of thing that, you know, YouTube is great for this kind of stuff, isn't it? Because you can guarantee there'll be someone on YouTube who's got a video with about 2,000 views who's spent a few days showing how to use this with, say, Serato or Rekordbox. And, and that will be the place to, to kind of get... Uh, get some inspiration for it. Um, I've got to be honest, we hardly use it, mainly because we use um, other DJ gear that has that stuff built in. Uh, so it's kind of been invented, that unit, for people who haven't got the, the, the controls on their DJ gear, I think. Uh, right, let's get back to the live questions. I'll put Faze away, keep the studio nice and tidy, uh, as, is my, as is my attempt, anyway. Um, right, so I hope that answers your question. Um, so the next one is from, uh, you don't like my music, it's just, a, just a, 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 um, an observation. Have you noticed that the new DJ Pro update has little dots under the waveform that indicate minutes? It's really simple but really useful, so thank you for that. We're going to be, um, we're going to be covering DJ Pro uh, AI version 4 soon. Now this is from Alex who says, do you have any tips for how to get gigs at bars and clubs? Is it just about walking in on an empty day and talking with a manager? Well, that's a very good start. You know, a lot of people don't get that far. They think they can just send out an email or a mix and, you know, they're going to get people knocking on their door. Gigs are only given to people uh, who the person offering the gig knows and likes, knows and likes. So you've got to get to know the people who run these venues. It's a small, even in the biggest towns, there's a small number of people who will be doing all the DJ booking for venues and, um, and promoters uh, booking people for their events and so on. Uh, you've got to get to know people, you've got to be likeable, uh, you've got to not push it, um, and just be in the right place at the right time. And you only do that by getting out of your house. Um, it's a lot easier the younger you are, of course, because you're going out anyway, your friends are the same age, you're, you're going to the venues that play the music you love, and so it's that next step is a lot easier. As you get older, you need to have a plan to do this kind of thing. Uh, but don't ever think you can do it from your bedroom or from behind your computer because you can't. Uh, it is something that you have to do in person. Um, we are going to be at some point covering sound switch jack. So at the moment, I simply can't advise. We don't know enough uh, to answer your question there. This is from Pappy. If I buy a controller, for example, a DDJ Rev 1, and I never buy the Pro version, I just use Serato Lite, but then I buy a controller that comes with Serato Pro, can I use that Serato Pro with the DDJ Rev 1? Great question. And the answer is no, you can't. So Serato's licensing model is, is, is a little bit complicated. Here's how it works. If you buy a cheap DJ controller, let's have a look at some of them. If you buy a cheap, or as they like to call them, entry-level DJ controller, such as, I mean, it's not that entry-level, this is like $499, but such as this one here. This is the, um, this is the NS4FX from Serato, or rather from Numart for Serato software. It comes with software called Serato DJ Lite. Now you can go and download that, anyone can go and download that, it's free. And any of these controllers that work with Serato DJ Lite, I've probably got more down here. What have we got down here is a Serato DJ Lite controller. In fact, I've got the DDJ Rev 1, the one that you're talking about. Um, they all unlock Serato DJ Lite when you plug them in and you can just use it, which is cool. But Serato DJ Lite is the cut down version of the software and generally you're going to want to use Serato DJ Pro at some point. Um, Serato DJ Pro controllers, and here's one. This is the Roland uh, 707M, it's a great controller. Um, these, when you plug them in, will unlock Serato DJ Pro, the, the full strength version of the software. Even that's not full strength because they've got add-on packs and some of the add-on packs contain things that frankly should be in the full version of the software. But anyway, that's another story. Um, so your question is, if you bought a controller like this that unplugged the Pro version of the software, then if you go back to the other one, will that work? And it won't. And the reason is that the controller is acting like a big dongle. It's literally got something built into the controller on the chip that says this controller is okay with Serato DJ Pro. And as soon as you unplug it, that gets forgotten. The only way, if you want 
to own a copy of that software that you can use with any controller, any time, any equipment, is to buy the software itself, which is not cheap. Uh, it's, um, it can be up to like four or $500 to buy the full version of the software with all the add-ons. But once you have bought it, it's yours for life. Um, that's, well, so far anyway, they've never charged extra to people um, um, as of now. So the other way you can do it is by subscribing. And Serato, I don't know what it is to subscribe, $10, $15 a month, I think. Um, so that's another way of getting the software so you can use it with, with anything. But it's a good question because it's not very clear how that works. Um, right, okay, let's go back to your questions, people. Uh, we're live here at Digital DJ Tips. Hope you're having fun. I certainly am. We would certainly appreciate you to hit those like or even share buttons or whatever it is you've got uh, on your platform. We're on Twitch, YouTube, and on Facebook, the preferred platform for these shows because uh, we can get to your comments afterwards if you ask them on Facebook and we miss uh, a lot of them necessarily because we're very busy. Um, this is from uh, Cameron. Uh, actually, that's from Jack who says, when you set positions and then use all, oh no, I've, I've already answered that one or not answered it for you as, as the case may be, Jack. Uh, Cameron, uh, Phil, do you have any beginner tips or advice for using Serato Studio? I'm considering it to improve my mixes, but I'm not sure where to start or if it will be helpful. So Serato Studio is Serato's music making software. It's kind of like a beat making software. It's not trying to be the uh, kind of Serato version of, uh, of a door of like Ableton Live or anything like that. It's beat making software um, and it's really good. It's uh, good if you're a Serato user because it does share things with Serato. Uh, the best thing to do uh, if you're interested in getting started making beats and making music with this software is to go to the tutorials. Serato have made some really good tutorials uh, that will talk you through making all kinds of music in their software. And that's a good place to start. And just because you don't like hip hop or lo-fi or EDM or trap or house, don't think that you shouldn't follow the tutorial because you'll learn more about the software by following along with these things. So I'd definitely go and look at the tutorials Serato have made. They're really good uh, and they'll help you to get started on that software. Um, do you have any guides on how to creatively use stem separating DJ software, says Edward, it's very hard. Well, the big thing with stem software, um, and for those of you that don't know what stem separating software is, it is a feature in DJ software, currently in Algorithms DJ Pro AI, but also in Virtual DJ, that lets you, when you're playing a track, take out elements of the track you don't want to play. So this is DJ Pro AI from Algorithm. So here we've got faders for our drums, our harmonics and our vocals. This is a basic setup here for doing this. So we can basically uh, take out or turn on these things. So one of the best ways of messing around with this is simply to turn on the drums and music in one track and turn off the vocals and turn on the vocals but turn off the drums and music in the other track. In other words, get an instant a cappella. And as long as they're in a similar key, that's going to sound good. And it's the same trick as just playing an a cappella over an instrumental, but you're making instant a cappellas from anything you want. I mean, it's really, really cool software, but it is something that you need to understand the basics of DJing to do. Like in that instance, you'd need to understand beat, not only beat mixing, but phrase mixing uh, and key mixing in order to keep those things sounding good together. Um, there is a DJ course I would recommend to you if you wanna start learning some of those basics. Uh, so uh, this is how to access the DJ courses. Of course, we are ultimately a DJ school here at Digital DJ Tips. It would be remiss of me not to show our newcomers how to do it. Head over to the Digital DJ Tips website, click on DJ Courses, uh, and there you'll see all the 26 DJ courses that we sell. Uh, scroll past the big ones, and if you are interested in DJing, scratching, um, uh, producing, or setting up a mobile DJ business, this is where to find your course. Scroll past those and go down to the mixing courses. I know it's hard to scroll past Jazzy Jeff and Angelo and Hype and, uh, and Luke and so on, but do it and go to Mixing Power Skills. Mixing Power Skills is the course which will take you past just getting two tracks loaded and mixing from one to the other. This is the course that will show you all the features that you need that will get you mixing like a power DJ. And then when you know this stuff, you can then start using the stems function to take it to an even higher level from there. Uh, so that would be my advice to you, would be to go take a look at the Mixing Power Skills uh, course. 
Um, so let's grab another live question. We've got about another quarter of an hour to go here today. Um, we have got this one in here from uh, Sarah, who's talking about streaming. Our Sarah was on last week saying that she was struggling with streaming on the same MacBook that she was doing her live streams on, doing her DJing on, um, and um, she tried everything we said last week, but it didn't work. So now she's uh, saying uh, maybe it's only because she's got four gigabytes of RAM. That could be the case. Four gig is not an awful lot of RAM if you try to run DJ software and also streaming software, so you could maybe get some more RAM for the computer or buy a second MacBook. Um, so she's also given a shameless plug for her vocal trance show there. Uh, not that shameless, sorry, you didn't even tell us where to find it, So, uh, but there we go. So if you want to look for the vinyl countdown on Saturday, uh, there you go. That's where to find it. Um, although you'll have to do some digging for the platform. So Greg, hi, hope all is well. I currently own the Pioneer DDJ SX and I came across the Pioneer DDJ 800 and thought of making a switch. What are your thoughts? Four channels aren't of huge importance to me. Why? What's wrong with your SX? That would be my first question to you, Greg. Your SX is a great controller. The DDJ 800 is a bit different, but it's not really a step up. In fact, it's a step down, as you say, because you're getting fewer channels. It is also going to be a pain because you're switching from Serato to Rekordbox. So why? Why do you want to switch from Serato to Rekordbox? If you've got a good reason to do that, that's going to weight your thinking a little bit towards going to the DDJ 800, maybe. The big difference between the Pioneer DDJ SX with Serato and its later controllers, the 400, uh, the Flex 6, the 800 and the 1000, is that the later controllers are all laid out like club equipment. So they've got the same looping controls, the same um, memory cues, and they're just laid out in the same way that club CDJs are. Whereas the SX controllers and the RX controllers, the generation before, were laid out more like DJ controllers are laid out. It doesn't really matter, but it, the muscle memory you've got to kind of adapt to the different layout if you're going to be using the more modern ones. And I guess Pioneer DJ has done that because that is the way they lay out their, their pro DJ gear and they want it to trickle down to their controllers. But look, honestly, apart from that, I'd say the SX is at least as good a controller as the DDJ 800. If it were me, I'd stick with the SX. You've got to have a good reason for that switch, really. Um, um, so Visant says, can you please do a like-to-like -like output comparison of different controllers? I'm going to be um, compelled here to show you where to find out information on DJ controllers because we've spent a lot of money on this part of the Digital DJ Tips website. So head to Digital DJ Tips for Samp and go to the top of the site and then click on Reviews. Once you're in the Reviews section, click on DJ Gear. And once you're in the DJ Gear section, click on Controllers. Uh, and from here, you'll be able to sort out our controllers review by review. And we have got literally hundreds of controllers here reviewed and they'll all be in the order that we added them to the site. If you want a beginner controller, you can use these to push it down to maybe up to $350. Uh, if you want an expensive controller, you can knock all that out and go only for the, the really pricey stuff. Uh, but whichever way you do it, this is a place to learn. And it works with everything, by the way, not just DJ controllers, it works with everything that we've ever reviewed, all the different software platforms, all the different uh, computer platforms, prices, and so on. So do go and take a dig around the, uh, the place on our website where we cover that, which is in reviews at the top. Right, cool. Um, let's grab some more live questions for our final 10 minutes. This is from Darren, who says, I've been doing a load of charity gigs uh, for free and raising loads of funds for them. It's been getting my name out there and giving me more experience also now getting back into the saddle. It's a good way of uh, getting your name out there, like you say, nice way of feeling good about your DJing. And also if you give out business cards, it's a nice way of generating paid bookings. So it's one of the few times when we'd say DJing for nothing is, uh, is uh, it kind of makes sense. So good on you there. Darren. Um, so I want to lighten my load, says Eka, um, and move to Algorithms DJ with an iPad and a DD, DDJ 400. Just wondering if it will hold with no issues for three to five hours. Probably, but you can also get the little adapters. I'm just looking to see if mine's nearby. Uh, that when you're plugging the iPad into the DJ controller, um, you can also power the DJ controller uh, from the same adapter. So it looks like this. 
and so you plug that one into the iPad, you get the USB, the USB C version if you've got an iPad Pro. And then here you plug your controller in and also a power input. So that will power both the controller and the iPad um, effectively from one power supply. And then you can play for 50 hours if you want with no problems at all. Also, do consider some of the controllers that are made for the iPad. I was looking at one the other day uh, because I'm thinking of taking this with me when I go off touring soon. Um, this is the, uh, the Reloop Buddy. Uh, and so this is a little controller with a slot at the top for your iPad. Um, and so, you know, put your iPad in there. It's got a little stand. Uh, it's a very small controller. Once you stick a little deck saver cover on top of it, easy to take anywhere with you. Um, and so, yeah, I might be taking this away with me for the summer. Um, because, uh, because hey, why not? It's always good to have a DJ controller with you when you're on the road. Um, so do consider um, the Reloop Buddy as well if you can find it in the territory you live in. Uh, it's a good little controller designed especially for Algorithms uh, DJ Pro AI software. Right then, put that controller away off camera. Keep the studio tidy, Phil. Less to do afterwards. Uh, let's grab our final few questions then before we uh, disappear. Dustin um, says, I prefer Serato over Rekordbox. I bought a used controller and I didn't get their, the Rekordbox license as they are subscription only. Uh, $2.99 a year for Rekordbox versus $2.99 forever for Serato. That's not quite true. Uh, yes, you can get subscriptions to Rekordbox that cost that much, but that you get more than you get with Serato for that money. Rekordbox's basic subscriptions are less than that. But totally get what you're saying, Justin. Uh, Dustin, sorry. Um, Rekordbox, you can't buy it outright. You have to pay a subscription, which it's a great business model if you can persuade people to do it. If not, um, you know, it's going to annoy people. Um, so hello CB Express DJ, back at you. Um, this um, is from Jimmy, who says all controllers unlock the full record box, though even 150, they don't. They unlock record box core, which doesn't have all the features. Although to be fair, it has a lot more features, an awful lot more features than Serato DJ Lite. Um, so just sharing, says Tony, I've been recording my sets with Dolby on. Uh, it's an amazing tool and easy to use. Uh, so great, I've never heard of Dolby On. Um, I'm going to take a look at that afterwards, so cheers for this. Um, so this is from Jacob. Uh, after lots of talk of real DJing recently, uh, I'm tempted to buy a turntable in addition to my controller and try it out for fun. Will a cheap belt drive one do the trick? So, you know, this probably came from us having turntables set up in the studio here. A couple of things. I learn on belt drive turntables. So the difference between a belt drive turntable and a turntable like this is that this has got a very powerful motor underneath. Like, so if I take this off, I'm not actually not going to do that live because I'll have to do something which, uh, which will take a bit of fiddling. But you can take this whole platter off on a Technics and then you can see that this spindle is driven directly by the motor. By me turning that, I'm actually turning the real motor. So that means that when you turn it on and off, you can see the speed at which it gets up to speed. The speed at which it gets up to speed is pretty quick. So DJs have slip mats, and the slip mat is on there to give a very buttery surface between the record and the motor underneath. Now these strobe lights here are showing us whether the record is playing a bit faster or a bit slower than it should be. You probably can't see them very well on the on the screen, um, and. When I go like this, you can see the motor is still going around underneath. Now on a belt drive turntable, even with a, a very sensitive slip mat, that wouldn't happen. It would, it would just stop like that. Because the belt is basically a rubber band. And so of course, if you go like that on a rubber band, it'll just stretch and it'll stop the, the motor going around entirely. And that means that when you let go of the vinyl, it won't start quickly. So this way, because I've got a very powerful motor underneath that I can decide whether the vinyl is being pulled around by the motor or not, because it's a direct drive turntable and a high torque is the name of the type of motor, in other words, powerful, it makes scratching, juggling, and all that kind of stuff feel great and it makes it really easy when you're DJing with it. So for DJing, you really do need a direct drive turntable, not a belt drive turntable. Um, now, that said, if you want a turntable for ripping vinyl and that kind of thing, then a belt drive turntable, some of the best turntables in the world are belt drive, but they're not for DJing, they're not for manipulating. So even though I started on belt drive turntables, shout out to Sound Lab, the makers of my crap turntables that I started on, I wouldn't recommend them to any DJ. I also wouldn't recommend buying one, um, you know, 
turntable DJing is done with two. Um, honestly, I mean, as I say, the reason we've got these set up is that we're in the middle of doing a, um, a piece on this at the moment. But honestly, I just think nowadays it's nice to DJ on turntables, but it's not the thing that defines whether you're a real DJ or not. DJing is about so much more than what, what, what you're actually touching to do it with. So yes, if you're curious, it'd be a good thing to do. But if you're gonna do it, dive in properly, get a, a full system with belt, with belt drives, with direct drive turntables and learn properly. Because otherwise, you're not really gonna find it that useful. I mean, you do get, you do get producers who buy one turntable, but they're generally using it to sample or getting a friend to do some scratches that they then use in their productions and so on, which is a bit different to, to DJ. Um, right, so let's now talk to our final couple of people for questions. It's been a pleasure here today, people. Do hit those likes, please, if you've enjoyed this. If you would like to, um, if you'd like to take part next week and we haven't answered your question this week, then come back earlier, but you can also watch the replay if you've joined us late uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, and finally, um, if you're on Facebook and you've asked a question and we haven't managed to answer it, my team will try to get to you very quickly uh, over the next few days. Uh, so this is from, um, it's, in fact, so many of you just talking to each other, um, which I love to see. Um, um, and also lots of you just saying nice things. So Dustin has bought the Digital DJ Tips book. Um, looking forward to reading it. Thank you for the hard work in making it. It's an audio book as well, actually, if you're not a reader and you do want to have a look at our uh, book. Um, so Craig says, I notice a certain other popular UK DJ school has just released a house mixing course. The question is, which one is the best? Having bought the digital DJ tips course, I'd say it would be hard to beat. Well, thank you, Craig. Listen, you go with who you want. Um, we, uh, we, we do our thing for our audience and uh, and we're very proud of that, but uh, there's room for everyone in this world. We've always said that. Um, right, so this is from uh, DJ Repeat, just saying hello over there in Vegas. Um, so uh, 69RJSG, uh, I'm looking for a sampler that I can connect to my Prime 4 to do my sound effects and DJ drops. This is gonna be our final question and it's a good one. So here's the issue. Even the cheapest DJ controllers, I've got a sampler on them. You just hit sampler down here and you can trigger samples. Great. You don't get that on standalone DJ gear. Then in DJ, Prime Go, Prime 2, Prime 4. Pioneer DJ, XDJ, RX, XDJ, XZ, and all those controllers. You don't get it. Even on CDJs, even on pro DJ gear, you don't get it unless it has a laptop attached. There's no such thing as a sampler on standalone gear. So what's a DJ to do? Well, there's loads of ways you can get around that. One way is simply to get your phone and get a sampler on it and plug an audio cable into a spare channel on the mixer. Koala, as in Koala Bear, Koala Sampler is a great one. Uh, you can get it as an app on your phone, job done. Another way is to get a dedicated sampler. These, one of my favorites is this one. It's the, uh, the Roland, uh, this is the SP404. It's actually the Mark II. Um, these are good because you load them up with samples, they've got a few more controls on them, you can trigger them all really easily, it's very tactile, and it just looks nice sat next to DJ gear. It's about the same size, you can sit it at the side of your controller or whatever, um, so if you could afford it, something like this is really, really good. I use a sampler um, from a company called 1010 Music, which is a, a tiny little thing which I love, um, and there are other samplers as well. For instance, there's this here is the, um, the Circuit Rhythm from Novation. You know, Samplers and drum machines are quite often the same thing because the drum machines tend to be samplers. This is actually a sampler. It also works very well as a drum machine, which is a good thing because you can have these things set up and you can be dropping drums and rhythms over the top of the music you're playing. It, can't, it doesn't have to just be sound effects and DJ drops, but anything like this will do it for you. If it were me, I'd definitely start with a phone app. Get a phone app, get a breakout cable if your phone has only got a USB-C or a lightning uh, to give you that headphones output. Plug it into a spare input on the back of your DJ mixer. Uh, there's always gonna be an auxiliary input on the back of the DJ mixer. Plug it into there. Uh, even on this old Technics mixer, there's an aux input. Uh, and then use that to mix your samples in to your uh, to what you're doing, uh, and job done. I say there's always going to be an aux input. There isn't always, not on the very cheap controllers, but most have uh, an auxiliary input on them. Uh, okay, people, we are done. Thank you so much for joining us for this hour of DJ questions and answers. It's always a pleasure to do this for you. I've got to be honest, in my week, 
this is the time I enjoy the most, just being with you guys and girls, hanging out in the community and helping. Digital DJ Tips is a distributed workforce company and that means we don't have an HQ. This is as close as we get to the HQ, but it's just my office. Um, and so we have Hangouts ourselves, as we all know nowadays, Zoom and Skype and so on. We have systems so that our team can hang out together online. But when we go live and when we talk to you, and I can speak for the rest of the team as well who are there moderating in the comments and stuff, that's when it all makes sense for us because we can help you all over the world. So thank you very much for being part of this. Do keep your eye on our socials and on our email list. And if you're not on the email list, go there to join because we've got some huge news uh, very soon about the Jazzy Jeff DJ course that we launched earlier this year. It's back and it's better than ever. Uh, and so whether you already have that course or you've been thinking about it, we've got some great news for you very, very soon. So do keep an eye on that. But meanwhile, from me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio, get good, get out there, make the moments. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.